us. Uh, welcome to the third episode of a show no one ever asked for. Uh, we're calling it uh, Frenchie and the Creep. My name is Steve Lawrence. I'm Frenchie and the Creep is? My name's George. I'm the Creep. He is really our uh, uh, VHS detective. This is an offshoot of a VCR party, um, a show the found footage does. Um, and once we hit quarantine, um, I got bored out of my gourd and I asked George if he would uh, help me out and do a deep dive into found footages uh, collection. Uh, on their website, you can find the Super Long Play Club, which has um, a ton of their live shows, videos, a ton of different things. So what uh, George and I are doing each week, we're tackling a new um, episode. Uh, this week we watched Found Footage Volume 5. Um, why do we skip four? I don't know. Maybe we'll come back around to it. Maybe we'll just keep going every other one. We are full of surprises. Uh, George, what did I forget to tell the people? You forgot to tell them uh, that we are doing this to help support Nick and Joe, whose uh, Volume 9 tour was derailed by a global pandemic. And uh, you can become a patron of the Found Footage Festival uh, at their Patreon page. That is right. Um, and with that um, membership, if you're $10 or above, if you join Patreon at $10 or above, they have a lot of amazing uh, videos and content that are exclusive only to uh, Patreon members. So please um, check them out. And um, yeah, thank you so much. And thank you so much for tuning in. This has been uh, um, fun. Uh, we are still doing this Joe Pickett style. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it is no, it is not, does not mean we're drunk. It means that we did no prep for this whatsoever. Um, speaking of Joe, let's, let's jump right into things. Uh, his mustache, huh? What'd you think? It was, I had to look at it. I had to pause it. I had to rewind it. I had to do all sorts of things to make sure I wasn't hallucinating that Joe had a sort of rudimentary mustache. Um, and it was, it was, it was eye-opening. Uh, and then I felt Nick looked much more like uh, Nick does today. I felt like it wasn't a huge jump for me. What'd you think? I thought he it was a sort of a, an intercalary Nick, a, a the midpoint between the volume three Nick and the Nick that we know and love today. Intercalary. I have to look that up after the show. Um, well, uh, I mean, here is the, the the tease of the episode. You can see Joe and Nick in action, and here some of the wonderful uh, wonderful fun things that were on this one. Tonight, uh, we have some really good stuff in the lineup. We have, uh, you're going to see a celebrity who made a really bad career choice. Uh, that's in here. Um, you're going to see a drunk guy mooning Hare Krishnas. That's, uh, that's in here. Look forward to that one. Um, and I'm excited about this one. Cats riding motorcycles. It's true. So, He's not lying. I think what shocks me about the live show is uh, that there's no antagonism between them. And as a VHS psychiatrist, in addition to a VHS detective and all-around creep, I'm eager to find out why. Um, what would, tell me about some of the uh, segments that you loved. Well, one of the first things that um, caught me was Nick starts off with, well, hello. Well, hello. Welcome to the Festival. Hmm. Now, those uh, Melindas out there know, well, hello, Melinda was stolen from, uh, stolen, borrowed, homage, you choose the word, George. Uh, but it was um, from Nick Nolte. Yes, in, from in an episode, episode of 48 Hours. Well, hello, Melinda. To hello, Melinda. To uh, so, hello, Melinda is something that has been uh, a staple of the show ever since Elliot Glazer's appearance with the tape of Nick Nolte. I think there was some sort of a sub subconscious thing going on. So this is well before that. Um, this was recorded, but Nick still had the well hello, just missing the Melinda. That wouldn't come from years, but there is somewhere in his uh, psyche, he knew, right. he knew that that was coming down the pipe. There was a place for Melinda in his life. Now, besides di diving into um, you know a lot of the stuff that I have not been able to see or maybe haven't seen in a long time in the found footage catalog, I want to also use this show to get to know and to give the Melindas a little bit more about George. Oh, so no. one of the first things that we jumped into was Pet Puri, which I thought was uh, a hilarious segment. Um, and I realized, like, did you grow up with uh, animals? Did you ever have any pets? Well, let me start by saying that Pet Puri is a public access pet show. As, uh, was always out of control because there are way too animal, way too many animals 
on way too small a stage and they're all the wrong kinds of animals all mixed together. They're all there all at once and it's just pure chaos. You leave my mic alone. Don't touch the hedgehog. You gotta touch it then. I don't care. There you go. Excuse me. Apparently the spines don't help against monkeys either. Here, here Jesse, you take the chihuahua. Oh, he's real cute. No, don't eat the chihuahua. That's a real attractive color. That's one of my favorite ones. Monkeys think they taste good too. It's not an animal that's meant to live in a household situation. Don't hit me in the face. Hey, kitty, kitty, kitty. As for my personal pet, uh, uh, history. I have horrendous allergies and asthma, so I could never have a pet. I did, I did though have at one point a hermit crab and uh, uh, it met a, a terrible end. It was, Were you very uh, close to this uh, um, hermit crab? Uh, not enough to remember its name. Okay. I but, think that's uh, a, that says a lot. Uh, what were some of your favorite things from this episode? The public access and seminars montage. And he has a problem a lot of young little boys have. He is invincible. No fear. He has no fear. He thinks he's some kind of hedgehog or Super Mario, you know. I knew a girl named Nikki. I guess you could say she was a sex fiend. I met her in a hotel lobby, masturbating with a magazine. Look at his eyes. That's why, ladies, her hands turned into banana peels. What? You see this big, gigantic sperm? Okay, this brother can swim. While they didn't do any uh, skits per se or tape segments per se, they did have Bob Odenkirk come in for a segment, a heavy hitter. Yeah, it's called The Practical Guide for Seminar Audience Members. Yep, and we enlisted the help of one of the best reaction shot guys in the business, Mr. Bob Odenkirk. That's right. Mr. Show. One of the best uh, there is. Breaking Bad. Yeah. Um, one, one thing that I saw was, uh, you know, there was a big ventriloquism uh, section to this. Everybody loves to laugh. Everybody likes to have a good time. It takes imagination. Not everything that I do is necessarily having a puppet come up and preach a sermon, uh, even though that's my goal. There's a lot of things that I do just to be funny. Those of you following the VCR party, Nick is taking this uh, self-quarantine to try to teach himself to be a ventriloquism, to be a ventriloquist. Uh, I think he's barking up the wrong tree. He should go down hypnosis. Relax and focus. The purpose of this recording is to improve your love life through hypnosis. Welcome to How to Hypnotize Others, Volume 1, with me, Marshall Silver. <laughs> yeah. The tape you are about to watch is extremely powerful, incorporating visual and verbal hypnosis. Breathing in through the nose, imagine your lungs are two balloons filling up with air. Now I want you to mentally picture and imagine that you're looking at the muscles in your feet. Or combine them. If he can hypnotize a puppet, I mean, that's, that's the hardest thing to do. But I would like to see him hypnotize Joe on, on VCR Party Live. Those are the sorts of things that get Emmys. And that's really what we're after. We're, we're about the plaudits. It's not about the money. It's about the fame. Speaking of fame, Emmys, I had never, ever seen that Lyndon Blair video. Um, and so those of you who have not seen Volume 5 yet, uh, we'll show you a quick segment. But basically what it is is Linda Blair teaching you how to get revenge on people. And oh my gosh. Hi, I'm Linda Blair, welcoming you to How to Get Revenge. What can you do to disrupt the entire family as opposed to just the mark? Put them on offensive mailing lists. Put them on the Communist Party's mailing list. What did you think of it, George? I thought it was sure to, to bring about many a lawsuit. I don't, it was pretty wild. I don't think you'd get it. I don't think anybody would even try that now. It was crazy. Have you ever done any crazy pranks to anyone along those lines to try to get revenge? I mean, I'd like to think my entire life is a long prank. Um, I don't know who I'm getting revenge on, society, myself, but we're going to find out. Now, you were telling me before we started that you really liked the guy stuff segment, and that really spoke to you. Tell us why. Uh, I don't remember saying that, but it, it, uh, I do have to use the 1% Outlaw Motorcycle Club terminology as much as possible in my day-to-day -day life. Fellas, here it is, guy stuff. Pretty impressive.
impressive, huh? I thought so. In fact, I thought so for a long time. Green wings means that the wearer performed cunnilingus on a venereally diseased woman. I like to kick. It's fun. Did you like uh, making it stick? The uh, the video where you learn to throw things like knives and tire irons. Again, a practical application of how you might use an improvised throwing weapon in a self-defense situation. I was like, why even waste time with the knife? <laughs> like, let's just go straight to the gun. Um, I think this might have been the first appearance of Rent a Friend. For if you haven't seen it, it's a video in which a camera is trained on a single person. Like, leaving pauses as though you're, you're um, having a conversation with him. And it is a very strange concept. And Nick and Joe had the actor on the uh, EP mode a week or two ago. Is that right? Yes. I'm Sam. And um, basically, I'm here because I want to be your friend. What's your name? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I see that. I really... That is you, isn't it? Do you mind if I take a look around your place a little bit? I have a challenge to you, George. Okay. I would love to see a cut of you interacting. So basically, we just flip the camera around. You're sitting in a chair. You answer every one of his questions. Challenge to you. Let's make it happen. Give the people what they want, George. Give the people what they want. I'll give the person what he wants. That person is you. Perfect. That's what I like to hear. Right. And then there was... Uh, Direct penis injections. That was uh, yeah. That was that's something a, that I'm it not seems to be a theme that we cannot get away from. We saw similar stuff in uh, After Dark. Hmm. Now we're getting it again here. Um, I can't tell with those whether it's you know Joe's fingerprints are all over it or Nick's because it's like it toes the line between the two. Nick and Joe are very different people, but somewhere in between them are direct uh, direct hypodermic injections into the penis. That's clear. I, I think mean, that's yeah we've been saying it for years but now yeah. now we have some evidence yeah they did uh, the hunting calls <laughs> but i want to see a hunting calls ventriloquism mashup like i feel like those are just begging to be put together if you can get a buck to you using a ventriloquist dummy you are a great hunter and a great ventriloquist. Um, and then I think that the one person that we have not discussed yet is one of my favorite all time um, from VCR party, from found footage, from everything, Frank Worley. Yes, Frank is a, a I guess he's a, he's a singer who uh, makes sing-along videos that have um, very um, interesting b-roll behind him she'll be driving six white horses she'll be driving six white horses daisy daisy down yeah the jesus road. christ that's supposed to be frosty that's what nightmares are made of it's terrifying um once again i hate to keep talking about the uh, true tv show um but Love when it. <laughs> Perfect. When we went, we went um, out into Wisconsin, into Frank, we went and saw Frank Worley set, got to talk with Frank Worley, and um, Nick tried on the Frosty uniform. There he is, right there, Nick as Frosty. I mean, it's completely in keeping with, with what we know of Nick. Yes. He, he loves, loves costumes. And Christmas. It's just Nick. So overall, um, is it worth the Melinda's? Would you put this high on the list for them to watch, low on the list? What would you? What advice would you give the Melinda's? I, I give it uh, four, four and a half Mickey's. Oh yeah, this is a, a great episode. I think you've got to see it. It's got some of the um, true stars of uh, VCR party and the found footage uh, universe. Um, definitely would advise checking it out. Um, I think Nick and Joe are in fine form. Um, what would you give Joe's mustache on, on the Mickey scale? Ooh, only a two. I feel like he can do a better job with that mustache. Yeah, I've seen photos of him with a much thicker mustache. Yeah. Um, we might have to get him on. We might have to try to figure out, do a couple questions with him and go, yeah, go through he, I mean, kind of their minds. We're going to interview Melinda's, and I know no person who's more interested in the segments that Joe produces than Joe. So in a sense, he's his own Melinda. You know, one of the reasons why um, – 
they haven't been on. They haven't done this. They hate to look back on themselves, like both Joe and Nick. They do not like. They're uh, like sharks. They're always going forward. That's right. Um, all right. So I've been promising this for a while. We finally uh, taped an interview with the Melinda. There's going to be more of these to come. Please reach out to us if you want to be a part of it. We'd love to hear from you. You guys are the best. Uh, now we'll go to our interview. So joining us is Tom Jacobson, uh, one hey of the Melindas. You guys probably see him a lot in the comments section. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. This is great. Great uh, to see you in person. Yeah, likewise, George. So we uh, reviewed um, Volume 5, and I know we did not give you enough heads up, but uh, we also wanted just to be a segment where we get to know some of the Melindas, um, their connection to uh, found footage. And mm -hmm. one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on is you have one of the longer uh, connections to, to Nick and Joe. Tell us how you met them. Sure. So uh, uh, me and Joe met in fourth grade. Um, uh, and we bonded basically solely on, we had the same exact birthday. I'm four hours older than he is. And, uh, so, you know, initially the, the first day of class, we initially kind of like glomped onto each other and, kinda, uh, you know, we were basically best friends from there on and out. We met Nick in sixth grade and, um, and kind of like, we just were kind of like the three amigos at that point and um did a bunch of stupid shit together so how has joe uh changed and how has he stayed the same since fourth grade uh he's less criminal so uh, he's he's not doing as many criminal activities at this point he's pretty much kind of uh semi-matured a little bit not that much <laughs> that's yeah i was gonna it's say that's, not that much but like it's pretty shocking to hear it, 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 a little bit tiny bit and Nick is since sixth grade. Is Nick? Uh, I mean, he still likes Alf. Yeah. Uh, what changes have you seen in, in Nick during that time? None. Absolutely okay. none. No. There's, he was no born an, an adult. Is that correct? <laughs> kind of. Yeah. 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 Pretty and much. Yeah. Even when they were younger. Now I just want to track. It was Joe into the filth and Nick into the sexuality stuff. Even then, or. Uh, great question. Um, eh. I would say I would I would venture on no. Like on Nick was not that sexual back then. I think he's hard to believe gross. a sixth grader was not. <laughs> I know, right? Not ex yeah, it, it doesn't make sense. But um, well, would would I'd, you say that um, Joe was very into tedium when you met him? He's like, I like things that are tedious. And will you be my friend? And you were like, this is what I've been looking for. There's too much excitement. <laughs> but by sixth grade, you needed a little more. Nick shows up. Sure. And uh, is that is that is that an accurate depiction of your thought processes? Yes. Yes. Are there are there any particular segments of uh, VCR party or videos that have just something that you'll you'll be somewhere you'll think about and it'll just it just makes you laugh every time you think about it. I well, I think the dichotomy of between Nick and Joe, you know, with with Joe's tedium corner and then Nick's ex excitement corner, that really is the basic essence of their relationship is that you know it's it's one versus the other extreme essentially and uh i think that's why they work together well so much they are an incredible incredible working pair oh yeah absolutely all right tom well we appreciate your time thank you so much for joining uh frenchie and the creep oh anytime. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we look forward to having you back. Uh, we want more embarrassing stories. You've got to start coming up with a long list. Especially I'll, for, uh, I'll work on it right now. But, but for both of them, yeah. Let's, let's get some embarrassing stories out there. and let the, I have uh, a ton. I have a yeah. ton of stories. So we'll have you back on and we'll discuss. All right. Sounds good, guys. Uh, so once again, that was Tom Jacobson. He goes all the way back to the beginning. Yeah. And I'd like to have him on again to get some of the origin stories. I really want to break down Joe, Joe and Nick's. I mean, he was there when probably when Joe met Nick. I mean, this is, this is really uh, important historical work that we're doing. It'll be a wealth of knowledge for him. Perfect. Thank you so much. And remember, if you want to um, chat with George and I, ask us any questions, tell us what you thought about um, the volume. L uh, please reach out to us in the comments. We want to know what you think about volume five. So Join the Super Long Play Club, watch Volume 5, and leave your comments in the comments section because you can't leave them anywhere else. You can write them on a piece of paper and leave them on your desk, but we'll never see them. And George, what um, episode should Melinda's watch next? Well, if I were to pick, I would say let's go back just one volume to Volume 4 and see the 
midway point between volume three Nick and Joe and volume five Nick and Joe and see if we can trace their development as human beings and uh, the development of Joe's mustache, really. That's all I care about. Yeah, let's find out if he has a mustache there. Uh, all right, George. Uh, it was blast as always. Um, thank you, thank Steve, you. for inviting me. Thank you so much. Um, until next week, should we tell people the schedule? You, uh, you know the schedule better than I do. Oh, I believe Tuesday nights are the weekly VCR Party Live. Correct. Wednesday nights, I believe Frenchy and the Creep drops. Is that yeah, right? yep. Thursday nights, a new EP episode appears for uh, patrons. And the last one? Saturday nights are quarantine classics. You nailed it, so buddy. It's, it's essentially a um, – we're, we're part of the VCR Party Live network. Very proud to be a part of it. Um, once again, no one asked for the show, so thank you for staying around, watching it all. Uh, we had a lot of fun doing it. Um, until you, next Steve. week. Until next week. All the, no, my nose isn't full of yuck anymore. That's just great.